Um, let's see. Julie, I got thumbs up. Okay. Um, so I, I sent you guys this turkey and then, and then, you know, if you wanted to, of course, get like your own, like a different kind. Like I, I know that some, like a, like a more of a youthful, the coloring page, that was fine too. But I just wanted to um, talk about like all the different things so because it's the last class. And I understand that Zentangle would be a, um, a class on its own. And we've been talking a lot about drawing and pointillism and inking. So wait, let me just put my spotlight on my hands here. Um, so like I made this little, um, so what we could do with this today is if you don't want to, you know, you, you have choices of how to render it. So you could just kind of draw it, you know, transfer it, and then, you know, use some of the shading techniques that we talked about, um, you know, or pointillism, which would be a lot of work, but, you know, quite magnificent. And this is more of like a, a Zentangle um, type of thing. That's not mine. I've done, I've done turkeys as a Zentangle. Um, just bear with me a second. Um, here we go. Um, I don't know if you guys can. See. So. Oh wow! Oh, so, wow. beautiful. You know, and you know, you can see like I, um, you know, try to keep it a little bit authentic in terms of. Um, you know, the direction. So something like this doesn't necessarily have to be Zentangle. That could also be a feather pattern in here too. Um, so, um, so I did try to, so I just wanted to show you that. I'm not exactly sure where it is. I should know that. Anyway, so as far as transferring, there were two ways that I, um, I mentioned in the email. One being taking your turkey and coloring it in the, you know, just getting some pencil in the back. And it doesn't matter why I use just a regular pencil. It doesn't matter what kind of pencil, um, no matter what, it's going to be graphite. You might have to just kind of, you know, push a little bit harder to get it nice and dark. And I use that. Um, uh, graphite paper is that, all? you know, is um, when we used to use typewriters, what was that called? That Carbon. <laughs> That's the word. <laughs> um, it's just like a, a, you know, a carbon paper, but there's graphite on the other side. Um, and, you know, so plenty of times I'll, if I'm going to transfer something, I'll just take this and use the card, the graphite paper. And I just want to like, just, you know, and once you have your image it, transferred, um, then what you do with it is kind of up to you. I just want you to, like, I, I started to draw, can you, you can see this. I didn't, I didn't do his head yet because I wanted to do that um, with you guys. Um, but once you have it transferred from here, now you have this image for those of you who like to watercolor, can watercolor. For those of you who want to use, you know, color pencils, you want to use pastels, whatever you want to do. But now that, now you have an image transferred and, you know, I just want to take a minute and address the idea of tracing because um, a lot of people are, you know, feel like that's like, quote, like cheating. Um, you know, I would say I'm going to go bold and say just about every artist does it at some point, you know, in some way. Um, you know, so as long as you're not, you know, you know, copying word for word, like here's an example. I just want to, I wanted to show you this only because I wouldn't have been able to do this artwork. So somebody asked me to, to paint their house, to draw their house. So this is the house. To sit and draw it freehand would take me forever. So I transferred it. And then it depends on what you do with it. We'll make it the artwork. Does that make sense? Right? So um, I have. It's going to take me quite some time. So if you want to know what I'm doing in my free time, this is it. Um, but anyway, so I don't feel like it's, you know, 
any less of an art form. Anyway, so once you have the graphite on the back of your turkey or the graphite paper or graphite, and then you're just going to, you know, you're going to trace as many details as you like. Um, I'm just going to get, because I didn't get his head in there. And, you know, at some point, like if you wanted to even like, you know, define where the shapes, like where the like dark lines are and create that as a shape, you can do that too. Um, so there I have my, and this gets a little messy. So I'm going to put this here. I also sent you one of these, but there's, if you look online, there's, there's thousands to choose from of anybody who wants to like explore Zentangle. Um, sheets like this exist. You just have to, um, you know, Google or whatever, search for um, Zentangle patterns. Personally, I don't use these um, because I feel like this has got too many rules for me. All right. But um, I do think they're great for inspiration. Uh, so in case you're stuck, you can kind of look around and be like, oh, you know what, that'll work, you know, that kind of thing. And so I do think that these are great for inspiration um, for if you want to zentangle. Um, so I did, but, but we don't have to, you know, if, if you feel like if that's not your thing. So I, that's why I thought, you know, our last class, you can have a little bit more choices and, um, you know, right now we're going to get the turkey outlined and how you fill it in um, and how many details you add will, you know, will be up to you. So I'm going to use a pen, um, a micron pen after my, my turkey is traced and we're tracing again. This is, does require, you know, obviously a little bit of patience and some time, um, but You know, again, uh, and if you wanted to get it really, I didn't do those, um, the inside of the feathers, because. Nancy, do you, do you do that, that kind of outlining before you put color on? I do. Yeah. Okay. It works well that way, because I was going to use watercolor pencils for the color. Yeah. So if you are going to do watercolor pencils, then you can, I would, I would, um, cause this is permanent. If you have your pen is permanent, then I don't, the pen, yeah. Yeah. Um, if your pen isn't permanent, then you, then you should do it last. Okay. So, um, but I, I would always, cause I'm a, a big watercolor pencil user. So, oops. Um, so I would, uh, always do the inking part first, you know, and this is where I can also get my, you know, once I do this, if I can get a thicker pen, I can determine where I want my blacks. Like if I wanted like this, this is also like, here's where like, you know, like shading would come into place. where I want my things to be darker. You know, I know I'm kind of jumping all over, but I want to just give a, as many examples as we can, because I don't know if I'm, if we're going to finish this turkey in the next, you know, 40 minutes, for, uh, 50 minutes, I'm sorry. So I mentioned before um, about turkey feathers that they're great to paint on. You know, there's a whole um, feather painting art uh, that exists. Um, I did try on, um, I think on like synthetic feathers. 
So I put, instead of birds of a feather, birds on feathers. Oh, neat. <laughs> but I know that they use turkey feathers as, as a nice, like, you know, so you, you have the feather and you, you can, you put like tape behind it. So it kind of keeps it um, oh, from fraying, mm. like masking tape. And then you could gesso it, uh, like the space. So again, it kind of gives you a surface. Um, okay. and, and gesso is a primer, is like an art primer. And uh, and then you have something to uh, you use acrylic paint. Well, there's a self-care Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have to do a, I have to do a feather painting. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I was gonna keep it. I was gonna keep them mostly the same, but I can change it at your request, you know. If people can't get a feather, you could trace a feather and just. Absolutely. So I should, you know, I don't. So did you mention what size pen you're using? I'm sorry. Yeah, um, this is a number two. And, a, and this is a, um, this is a micron number two for these. And then for my darker lines, I have a, um, a sharp, uh, you know, a, ultra fine Sharpie, which is kind of um, equal to an eight, I would say. Um, but since we're tight, I might as well look, show you because I'm, and a lot of you guys have seen this already in person because he came to one of my art shows, so. Um, Nancy, uh, why do people use pen, pen rather than pencil? Because <laughs> I'm afraid of making a mistake Okay. You know, that's a, you know, so it's a really good question. And, and the thing with Zentangle is, is that there isn't any mistakes. <laughs> oh, yeah, there are. <laughs> <laughs> because you can always fix it. You shouldn't be worried about the mistakes. It's more about the meditative process. And so they don't recommend like in like if we were in a real like a true Zentangle class, they don't recommend you using pencils other than shading. So, okay, um, thank you. But uh, cause you want, you don't want to be caught up in the mistakes. And then like, and you could see like that kind of like flows over into my philosophy of teaching anyway, is you, there's always a way to fit, uh, fix a mistake and happy accidents and all that stuff. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so just, to, just cause we're talking about it. Here's my, my feather. I don't know if you guys can see that. Oh, wow. So um, I painted an eagle on a feather. Um, so, and that's a synthetic, that's a synthetic feather. Here's, here's my, so then I went into other birds. Here's a parrot and a raven, an owl, of course, because that's my thing. Hmm. No. Oh, <laughs> those are great. So yeah, and then I had um, one of the gentlemen that, that works at the, you know, in the, in our curatorial department at the museum, he framed it nicely for me. So. Um, adds to the beauty. You know, it was a, it was a challenge. I'm, you know, it's a, I'm part of a, um, like a ladies art club um that you know on social media that we kind of found each other through social media i think i'm the only american in the club really they're, yeah they are the they're all um from other countries which is kind of neat very yeah. neat um and er, it, they they in the beginning of each year they pose a challenge and there was like a water challenge and one year we and this year was that year was a feather challenge and I'm like well I draw animals all the time so feathers are not a challenge but draw it would be a challenge to draw on a feather on a feather yeah <laughs> it's a little different I'm not going to get into the real 
details of the. Why aren't you getting into the details? Not yet. I want to get the whole thing because it's very tempting for me to, um, to start with getting the, those, these patterns in the feathers. It's very mm -hmm. tempting for me to jump right into that, but I want to get the whole thing outlined first, just so this way I think it's better to. teach that way let's see I don't know about you guys but I jump around a lot it's not and when I'm re I know that I'm going quickly when I'm retracing these but it really just is for the purpose of time. Nancy, does your turkey have feet? He doesn't because I oh. just, they're not there, does yours? <laughs> yes, but I wanted to see real turkey feet. <laughs> um, yeah, because he, he's in, in the grass. We could, yeah. you could uh, we could absolutely, I'll do that. I'll Google and I'll look and uh, see what what my turkey feet would look like. My other one did. Um, let me see if I can, that might be easier. That's hard to see. Yeah, just so, so Dottie, you were asking about um, coloring second. For this one, I I just got, I put color down on the paper first and let it dry. I just kind of spritzed it. You can see like the watermarks yeah. and stuff. Uh-huh. Uh, uh -huh. Right. So that's, that's another, for those of you who are watercolorists, is another idea, like just to kind of get, you know, a nice wash over it. Um, all right, let's look up turkey feet. Nancy, that's okay. I made up feet. Okay. <laughs> Three toes in yeah, they front are. and two toes, two toes in back. Okay. That's what I did. I thought about that. I thought about that. Uh... All right. So I think I'm going to do a combination right now of, you know, of realistic I'm going to get some of my blacks in. You know, I think this also really lends it to those of you who like really enjoyed pointillism. Again, although it's not, it will definitely be a challenge, but that would look really cool. And as far as, you know, the details, you know what, something like, these are fine. Or you can get them a little bit more. And then another idea is, and this is a, um, 
a Zentangle, both a inking and Zentangle trick is to also, you can also now shade with a pencil and the ink at the same time. So like, if you can see how I, I did this now. Oh, there's some chat, sorry. So you would never do Zentangle with just graphite pencil? Um, I don't, but I'm never going to tell you that there's a, um, there's a, a, but there's a, I only use pencil for shading. Usually the art of Zentangle is with a, is it is with a pen. It's developed by a calligrapher and a monk. Um, so, so uh, Christina asked, uh, where do you buy synthetic feather? You can get that at any, at any um, craft store. You know, any uh, Michaels, I guess at this point would be the, the one that would be. Um, Julia, your uh, that drawing is ink, right? Uh, no, it's actually pencil because I was such a coward. <laughs> I was afraid. It has a nice paint. darkness to it. Uh, I I darken it uh, using the eight B. Okay. Um. Yeah, I. Again, like I am so, uh, you know me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you that there's no rules. Um, but I did read. I, I kept reading how people were saying, "No, you're supposed to use ink," and and they were very adamant about it. And I used pencil anyway, but <laughs> but I am gonna put some ink in the turkey. Yeah. So, you know, and I think, again, like. I feel like being adamant about about a process that's supposed to give, be meditative is is kind of contradictory. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but uh, you know, I, I I I can tell you the philosophy behind it is that there there's no mistakes that there's always a way to cover it and not to worry about so much about the and the whole glide of the pen. Um, the doodling kind of concept and the glide of the pen is, is part of the art form. Um, so is, but again, I, I you got to do what, work, what works for you. What about paper, Nancy? Mm -hmm. What about it? No, the paper that we're using? Um, I mean, I'm just grabbed an old drawing pad and I'm realizing that it's in pretty rough shape from college a few decades ago. <laughs> um, so I'm wondering what to look for with a good drawing paper. You're talking about the glide of the pen and such. Yeah. Um, so, the, so there's two different um, things here. For regular drawing, um, for regular drawing, you definitely want a good, you know, you wouldn't go under like an 80 pound paper. Um, you would look for, you know, 80, 90 and above. Um, what's this? This is watercolor paper and it's 140 pound and it had, it's like a nice um, card stock. Um, for something like Zentangle, you want like a smooth, like a Bristol board. You want it definitely to have a smooth finish. Um, um, because again, that glide is part of the process, and so you're you know, this this has a little bit of texture because it's a student grade um, watercolor pad. Um, but some so if you're gonna purchase anything, you want to look for um, at least eighty pound. I like a, I like the mixed media pad that exists. I don't know if you if any of you guys else are using that. Jerry's has that always on sale. I think. Yeah, that's what I, I think where um, the mixed media yep. pad is what I usually use for this class. Um, so, and then you could kind of use that paper. It's got a nice weight to it. You can collage on it and it'll hold the, it'll, you can put some, 
paint on it, it'll, it won't rip the, pa the paper and stuff like that. You want it to be able to withstand some, you know, some stuff. So you can see, so like in this turkey, if I'm going a little bit more realistic, the key's gonna be darker. I know he's darker down here on the bottom, right? Because he's cat casting a shadow. <coughs> Excuse me. So those of you using a pencil, you could do this, you know, shaded also with as a pencil. I like the combination of the ink and the pencil. So now this is a little bit more realistic. If I wanted to throw in um, some patterning, some Zentangle kind of patterning, I could do that too, because there's no rules. <laughs> <laughs> and those of you who know me by now in this regard, I always look for a place where I can start with a flower. Nancy, are you opening up that uh, Zentangle class waiting list? Um, uh, I'm not there yet. I have to take it one week at a time. But I, yeah, be on. You could. You're on the waiting list, right? Yeah. Yeah. How is it? Who was asking? Doris. Okay. I wouldn't. Uh, I, mean, I wouldn't worry about it, Doris. I need to worry about it if I'm going to get in, though. <laughs> I need a link. Yeah, you'll get the link. I. Uh, I'm. I send the links. Usually the Thursday before. <clears throat> I 
Um, Would you do the face after? Because that I think is going to be the challenge for me at least. Sure, absolutely. Let's start that right now. Yeah, the face is something I would definitely keep in um, uh, as something that would be more realistic. Uh, you know, I always, uh, whenever I, I mean, he doesn't really have much to him. Okay, so it looks like there's patterns going down his, I guess this is a beak, right? He's a bird, so that's a beak, right? Mm -hmm. Look at his. Can't see anything of what you're doing. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. It doesn't look like there's much white in this, but I want to get at least some white in the eye. Is that better? No, that that's fine. It, it's just when you're doing it, you're my yeah. hands. <laughs> yeah, but that's okay. there's nothing yeah. I can do about that. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. Actually, now that I'm looking at this, this comes around this way a little bit. I missed it on the trace. Um, his head definitely has this like hood. which has patterns. This seems to come and go in this kind of direction.
I just gave him bangs. <laughs> <laughs> this is an example, Joya, of, you know, you're making a mistake <laughs> and now I got to fix it. <laughs> so, yeah, it doesn't look like a mistake. <laughs> yeah, but I, I feel like I just, I feel like I just made him look like one of the three stooges. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> gave him little bangs. It's like, you know. So you can see that I am right now just using my pen to shade.
I've officially named him Mo. <laughs> <laughs> Curious if there's anybody using other um, other mediums other than pen. Like I know that some of you guys are using watercolor pencils. Anybody using like their pastels or? I'm using regular, just watercolor paint. Right. Okay. You just watercolor paint. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. I'm probably. Anybody else? I really just moved and I can't find my colored pencils. <laughs> oh, I understand. Unpacking is probably the most daunting task of all, right? <laughs> yeah. I've been unpacking. My parents just moved. I've been unpacking them. And there's a, a tour right after that. Cheryl, are you teaching the tour right after this? <laughs> are you teaching the tour right after this, Cheryl? Un unmute yourself. Unmute yourself, yeah, there you um, go. Somebody is here fixing my clothes dryer as we speak. <laughs> Isn't that exciting? Yeah. I, I am doing a, uh, I'm leading a tour for Lacadere Academy Oh, okay. At two o'clock on portraits. Oh, okay. Portraits. I thought you were, I saw your name. I wasn't sure if you were te teaching them the mill, doing those, the mill class. No, I'm not doing that one, unfortunately, or okay. fortunately. <laughs> and Nancy, can we just jump into that one or do we have to have registered in advance? I think you can jump in. Yeah, because that's Ortiz, Virgil Ortiz, right? They're going to do our, I just saw it on the calendar. Sounds that, right. He's wonderful. Virgil, we're also doing a museum public tour um, the, that happens every month, and that's Thursday, and anybody can do that. That's also Virgil Ortiz on Thursday the 19th at 3 p.m., and I'm leading that one. Is that in person, Cheryl, or is that on? That's Zoom? through, well, it's in person. It means it's me live, <laughs> but um, we're you doing what? It's inside the galleries using Matterport, so it feels like you are. At, we're actually it's um, 3D photography of all the galleries. We're inside the museum, wow. figuratively, not literally, but you can see the works as they appear inside the galleries. Mm -hmm. And that's the 18th at three. 19th. 19th at three. Correct. So that would be on the website, right? Should be. Okay. So that means I know I saw it somewhere. Yeah. Sorry to be so dumb, but does that mean that I don't go to the museum? I stay at home with my computer? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You don't go to the museum. You can. No, I don't want <laughs> but only on certain days. Yeah. Who knows for how long? Yeah. Um, now, is that through Mill or the art museum? Which. The How public tour. You, uh, there's, there's one through Mill today, um, and, and a docent is leading that. That's. That's Mill. Then there's the museum does a public tour every month. Um, usually it's ah. Saturdays or Sundays, you know, in, in normal times. But uh, this week, this month, it's Thursday, the 19th at 3 p.m. Virtual. Okay. So you register ahead with the museum? Uh, I believe I believe you do. Uh, if you go onto the museum's website, um, mammontclarartmuseum.org, oh. and look at um, 
virtual programs or events, you can find out all of the information. Okay. But it's not a member's tour, it's a public tour. Member's tour, you have to be a member of the museum. This is a public tour. So my imagine, I imagine there's no registration. And um, so you, you're on your own. Yeah. Okay. I think that's Thank it's, you. Yeah. He's a he's an extraordinary guy, Virgil Ortiz. He is extraordinary. Yeah. He's um, and as um, philanthropic as he is, um, productive and uh, well known and amazingly talented, and always always um, looking to change his style style and progress um, to another stage. Yes, he's an amazing um, ceramicist. Yes. Potter. And movie maker and and movie maker and, and fashion designer. Fashion designer. <laughs> so he's got an amazing website. You can, you know, Virgil VirgilOrtiz.com. It's all yeah. there. Yeah. I couldn't I I think I, I like almost cried with joy when he followed me back on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so like a like a teenager so he's even started manufacturing um masks i saw yeah yeah months ago and they're and they're really they're heavy duty masks they're um they have this little logo on them and then there there's a special filter that's inside a pocket that you can take out for when you wash the mask and then when it's dry you stick that little filter back in oh, that's great. And, uh, yeah so they're not inexpensive no wow well. So, all right. So I'm going to, because we have like, I don't know, like a little bit more than 10 minutes, I'm just going to ask if anybody wants to share, if you want to show me what you're working on. So Lita, ooh, I got you. Oh, nice. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh. Lita, that's great. That's amazing. I love the splatter. I, I'm a big fan of the splatter. <laughs> yeah, well, not, how much can you really do after a point, you know? So. This was great. It was a lot of fun and it really put me at ease. So it was great. Good. You know, I really yeah. love like the the pat the brush patterns yeah. on the bottom that you have. That's, I say go with the pro. That's great. So thank you. Thank go you. Go with the pro and make sure you get at least a, a basic case and no. an apple case for it. I'm not sure. Like I had like, oh, like Marilyn. I have, Is that I you? Yep. <laughs> Marilyn Co. Oh, oh yeah. wait. I'm there going I to not let you. Deal okay. That's great. Thank you. Very detailed. That's great. I'm having a lot of fun using the graphite pencil. I have and I never use it. So this is perfect. Good. The what? Yeah, I can see the combination and it makes yep. the it makes really? a difference, right? You have some great mm -hmm. ones. I'm surprised on a yeah. Friday, rainy Friday. So and I'm gonna put the paint on later. I'm gonna like either use a brush and just like splatter it on or i might just, just paint a lot. yeah yeah you can you or you can use what i don't do you have you right, have right, pencil, right? let me know you saw yeah you mm -hmm. so, so is somebody talking uh, i think that's marilyn we're gonna mute i'm gonna mute you marilyn there you go okay um john i got you so now john is our master shader let's see let's um spotlight your video look at that <laughs> that's amazing and the fact I, i'm surprised you didn't do zentangle no, I, I I wouldn't have time. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's so. amazing. Now, I was just curious, when you Zentangle, you use a pen? I use a pen, yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah, well. yeah. This is pencil and charcoal. Yeah, look how beautiful that is. That's amazing. You just did that now? Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are so fast. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. So, Lynn, where I am. I got you. Uh, Lynn's next. Let me see, Lynn. How you doing? There you go. Why are you having fun with that too? That looks great. Or you think you'll you'll finish? Will you, can you finish that? Will you finish that? <laughs> we'll finish today, but yeah. No, but I'm glad that you're. Oh, there goes my. Sorry about that. I'm gonna cancel you. I bet my bird just popped up again. Let's we'll see. Gallery view. So, Judy. All right. I did this yesterday, and I used colored pencils. Uh-huh. Wow. And then today, 
I've never done Zentangle, so I, I drew a very large. Look at you. Yeah. That's great. And I guess I'll fill it in, you yeah. know, as the day goes on. But yeah, just a question of just, you know, patience and time. And sometimes it just makes the day go by and also you look up yeah. at dinner time. <laughs> so <laughs> that's great. I'll show you. I'm glad that you're playing with it, you know, and making tea. Doris, let's see how you're looking. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> None of that. That looks great. Very sturdy. <laughs> I really love the back feathers tail, don't you think? that you, Aren't you happy with those? Yeah, that was the easy part. Now <laughs> comes the tough ones. Okay. You know, just keep, you know, just keep, you know, bouncing back and forth between different patterns. Some things can remain, you know, white or, you know, or just they don't have to be quite as intricate. So um, they don't be so hard on yourself. It looks great start. <laughs> <laughs> is there anybody else who wants to share with me? Yeah, I'll take here. here this is Dottie. Okay. All right. Come on, Dottie. Let's um, Look at it's you. just pencil and uh, pen, so I have a ways to go yet, but um, I'll color it. I use the, the pencil, you know, wa watercolor pencils, so. That is great. You know, Good. Dottie, we've been through a lot in our art journey, and, you know, that's a very strong piece. I'm really proud of you for that. <laughs> <laughs> so, Beth, you had your, your piece up before? Yeah. Okay. Nice. Oh, that's great. I can't wait to get the emails when you guys show me when these are done. <laughs> well, they do lend themselves to Zentangle, don't they? It really does. That's one of the reasons. Debbie, let me see how. Oh, my gosh, you got a lot done. Uh, I've been working primarily with black so that I'm going to start doing color now. Okay. Um, because it, it seems a little heavy to me, but it's still fun. And I think when I, I get some brighter colors in there, I'm not sure how realistic I'm going to keep it. I might just do some bright stuff to make it pop a little. I really love that idea. You know, that's definitely us speaking right through what I, that's exactly what I would do is, is do real and then get, you know, fancy with the colors that that's a lot of fun. So, yeah. Yeah. It I, was fun. Yeah. Thanks. Good. Um, Nancy, yeah. could you possibly, um, if we wanted to email what you've done to us? Sure. I can do that. Yeah, because I'd love to see, you know, when I have more time to investigate it. Uh, yeah. But yeah. I did a little, I did a very little thing. It's, it's right, really Can I see your little thing? Do you mind? No, it's really little. Oh, look how cute. <laughs> <laughs> That's very it's, sweet. It's a cheat. So yeah. I need it, but I had fun with it. But I'd like to do yours, but I need more time. That's so okay. You, not the turkey in the color. If you could send us your um, black and white. If you could you send me it. your black and white. Okay. Thank no, you. You got it. And I don't, I don't. Uh, as I said in the beginning, I don't believe in the, the cheating. <laughs> so I think that anything that... You know, it's yours once you get your own patterns in it and things like that. So anybody, these look great. You know, this is something that, you know, it's mine. Do. let's see. Look at you. <laughs> That's great. Look at the Zentangle on that. Um, Thanks. Will you share that? With, will you email me that when it's done? Sure. All right. I would love to see that when that's done. Yeah, this is definitely one of those things that if this were a Zentangle class, we would take more than one week on it. Well, I did take your Zentangle class before, so I do have a little experience. Yeah, I remember. You did the... the, um, the Mandala? Yep. Yeah, my husband was there. I remember. So, Nancy, just give like a brief description or definition of Zentangle. Okay, so Zentangle is supposed to be is like is that like that is doodling, all right? right? So it's kind of like taking doodling and the idea of um, doodling being something that's relaxing and puts you in like a meditative state. Uh, okay. Um, so that's why I was saying before that it like 
you shouldn't worry about mistakes and that's why you should, you know, work, you know. Um, so it's the idea of just, um, they're called structured doodles, you know, and I, what I do when I put Zentangle inside of something, it's called Zentangle inspired art. Okay. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm a big doodler. Um, I've been ever since I was little and actually, I don't know if we've ever been in meetings together, but if you ever look at me, I am doodling because that's the only way I can focus, you know? So if I'm doodling during a meeting, I'm, I'm listening, you know? So if, um, otherwise, otherwise I'm like planning shopping lists or worried about my daughter or something. I think I've been doing a lot of Zen tangling without my realizing it. That's why I'm asking. (laughs) Yeah. And then, you know, what happens is, is it's a, especially for a beginner or people who are, um, you know, I think that you can get a really nice result for, you know, without a lot of practice, you know, and, and not worried so much. Of, and then you, then you're proud of yourself and then you want to do more. And so it's, it's, it's a win-win. <laughs> so, um, but anyway, so going forward, you know, in, in the winter, it looks like I'm going to be, uh, I think it looks like, um, the collage and and paper crafts will de- will be a way that we're going to go. So if you're in, if you're going to be taking that, I'm going to ask if maybe you can kind of like think about your recycled materials. Think about like before you put it in recycling, whether or not you like your paper. Like if you like envelopes, like if it comes in like a especially crisp, you know, holiday envelopes, like they come in in pretty colors or or interesting patterns or even even the holiday cards we can use. Um, so I really love the idea of like recycling some of these like junk mail and, and especially we're going to be getting a lot of it, these, you know, coming with, and, uh, you know, circulars and looking at things in terms of like the patterns on them and the colors that they have. And, and we, so throw them all in a bag <laughs> so, and, we'll, and we'll use them and, uh, and get creative and also books, um, books that, you know, maybe you want to, you don't want to throw it away, but you want to give it like a new artsy life might be fun too. Um, that's what I was, what I was hoping to do in, in the winter. So something a little different. And, uh, um, that's, uh, and will we still use the multimedia pads for that? Or should we get the crystal board or? Yeah, you would. Um, so, so. By Joni, thank you. Um, yeah, you could use the Mixpedia pad for that. Mm-hmm. You can even use, you know, like it's amazing, like the cardboard that's like a Cheerios box is a really nice cardboard, you know, like can you cut it down and and use the back of it? Nobody knows that it's a Cheerios box and like things like that. I really would love to like, as minimal of um, purchasing supplies is, is like my, my key, but yeah, a mixed media pad would be great for that. But um, I just want to tell you that it's been really been a pleasure, you know, meeting with you guys every Friday. It's all, it's really the my most favorite thing that I do. I say that sincerely. I hope you realize, you know, that I I mean it. And uh, so and, and thank you, Nancy. And it's thank been great. You, Nancy. We've and uh, I wish you guys a great and happy and healthy, safe holiday season. You too, Nancy. Really? So. Thank you so much, Nancy. You've thank been you. a pleasure. So, yeah. I hope to see you in you. person someday soon again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you so know. much, Nancy. Um, Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. 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 So it's been great, you know, and uh, I have a feeling we'll see each other in December. <laughs> so be here. Yes. So. Bye. Yeah. Thank right. you, Nancy. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.